Hi everyone, um, welcome to Managing Your Time in College. Thanks for joining me today. Sorry, I'm looking at all the stuff on the screen. Um, I know the weather's kind of bad back east, and um, I'm in Boise, Idaho right now. It's raining here, and I know it's a little early on the uh, west coast, so thank you for coming. Um, hopefully everybody can see everything. There's a place where you can type in a question, so I'll take a lot of questions at the end, but if something I'm saying isn't clear or anything, feel free to type it into the questions uh, box also so you can make sure to clarify if a bunch of people are confused about something. Um, and then a few things just before we get started. Um, I'm Kelsey, nice to meet you guys. And I have a tendency to talk really fast. So I will try to talk slowly. <laughs> um, but that is a challenge of mine. So if I'm talking too fast, feel free to say that also in the questions box. Um, and then I'm a visual learner, so I have notes and different things down here um, to, I just have to see things. So if you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at the timer or um, my notes or anything like that. So that's how my brain works, so my apologies for that. Um, and then again, I think we have an hour allotted, and depending on how fast I talk, this will take anywhere between 20 and 25 minutes. Um, so again, there'll be a lot of time for questions at the end. And one of my favorite parts of my job is working with students. So I'm really looking forward to questions. Feel free to ask me things. <laughs> um, I'm pretty friendly, so feel free to type stuff in the box. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and if you think of a question too, just type it in and then at the end I can answer it also. So you don't, like me being a visual learner, I have to write stuff down so that way you won't forget it. Feel free to just put it in and I'll go through as many as I can until we run out of time. Um, so, again, thank you for coming, managing your time in college, and I'm going to flip to the next slide here. So, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background so I'm not some random lady talking to you through the computer. And I have to apologize, the garbage trucks are going by right now, so if you hear some loud machinery, <laughs> just from the street, sorry about that. Um, Anyway, so my background is in uh, higher education, and I'm an English major from Occidental College in Los Angeles, uh, which if you're looking for a great liberal arts school but uh, has the benefit of being in a really big city and a lot of resources, it's a fantastic institution. You might want to look into it. Um, <laughs> sorry. The garbage truck is right there. Sorry, guys. Uh, and then my master's is in higher education administration. So when I went to college, I just had a fantastic experience. And I think I'm just a geek by nature. And it was so interesting to me what college does and can do and what happens there and the choices you have and the experiences you can have and the opportunities you have are amazing. There's no other time or place like that, really. So um, ever since then, I've worked uh, at or for colleges. So um, before my current stint, um, I worked at or with colleges and universities um, in residence life and student activities and the dean of students office, um, kind of all over Boston, Michigan, California, um, kind of bounced around. Um, but the English major in me kind of won out too, so I have two loves. Um, so I switched from working on a campus to writing um, about higher education. So I was a blogger for US News and World Report. Um, I haven't done that for a year or two, but the blogs are still up if you if you know need to Google advice. Um, and then I, since writing, I've sort of been picked up by a variety of different places who are trying to give advice to students. So I've had some fun TV things and CNN and Katie Kirk show and done interviews with or written pieces for um, Teen Vogue, just different things that are, that are listed. And I love it. I really love reaching out to students and providing advice. I think everyone assumes you can kind of figure out college as you go, but it's actually pretty hard. <laughs> so if someone can give you some advice, that would be helpful. So I'm, I really enjoy trying to help folks the way that other people help me. Um, so currently, I'm the college life expert on about.com. Um, so I have a blog and a newsletter and I answer emails and write articles um, just about college life. Everything from what to do if you have a bad professor or joining a fraternity or sorority. That's a big article right now. And one article at the end of the semester that's always pretty popular is 
what to do if you fail the class. So there's all kinds of advice there, financial aid questions, um, and the URL is there. And I was getting a lot of questions from parents through that site, but I really felt like it should be a student site for student-based content. So I'm starting another site, excuse me, of my own called collegeparenthandbook.com, and that's for parents and their questions because <laughs> they have a different experience than um, than you should. So. And then also, I just wrote um, a book, College Trust Solutions, that's being published in April. So you can pre-order it. Um, it's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Uh, but obviously, I have a lot on my plate, so time management is a concern for me, too. Um, it's really nice to be busy, right? I think we'd all rather have too much to do than not enough. But at the same time, that does present some challenges, <laughs> particularly with time management. So... Um, Having said that, uh, just kind of move forward to the next slide. So I think um, people throw the term around time management, like, oh, you need to have good time management skills, and having time management is really important. But what does that mean, right? Like, what does time management mean? That's a very vague concept, I think. So um, following up with my notes. So time management can mean all kinds of things. Um, in the context of your college life and your college experience, time management means, I think, three main things. It means making wise decisions about how and where to use your time, right? Because you're making a choice about how you spend your time no matter what's going on. So even if you're goofing off or just kind of checking out, that's still a, that's still a choice. So is that a decision or are you just kind of defaulting or... Um, it's it's complicated, right? You can't really stop time from going. So <laughs> you just kind of need to be conscious about that. And then when you do make decisions, are you kind of following through with that? Are you um, using your time efficiently, effectively, and productively? Um, and third, I think for time management in college, um, you need some kind of large system. I, I hesitate to tell students, you need to do this, you need to do that. But with time management, I you just need a system. <laughs> I think it's impossible. Um, to to succeed and to even make it through college without some kind of time management system. Even if you're the most go with the flow kind of person, there is just so much going on and you have so many obligations that having some kind of system to manage everything is critical. It's critical. Um, and a lot in interviews I get asked, you know, students don't have any money. That's the thing they have the least of. What advice do you have? And I actually don't agree with that premise. I think Students do not have a lot of money, that is correct, <laughs> um, most of them at least. I think students actually, I think their most sacred resource is time because there is so much to do and there is so much you want to do and there is so much you need to do and so much you have to do and there is only so much time. You can't get a student job and get more time. You can't take out a loan for more time at the end of the semester, right? Time is extremely prized and and you as a college student really need to be aware of that I think because I think it can slip away and once it slips away things can get out of control <laughs> really fast um, so I really encourage students to to be very mindful and intentional about how they spend their time because everything is connected to that to making your financial aid deadlines your paper deadlines sleeping, your health, your stress levels, friendships, it's its all connected, I think, to being able to have good time management, um, which we'll now go into in more detail. So uh, the next slide. So as I said, I'm a visual person. So for me, I and my own life now, too, I have all these projects going on, which is great, right, but challenging. Um, so one metaphor that works for me is to think of um, time management as a jar of marbles. So your jar is how much time you have in a given period. So that could be your day, your week, your whole month, your semester, your college experience. Um, but there's limited space, right? There's, there's only so much you can put in there. And so you need to be mindful and intentional and deliberate about what goes in there. Um, so if you sort of think, okay, I have, this is my jar for today. What do I really need to get done? 
and and approach it like that instead of waking up and thinking, which I sometimes have a tendency to do too, and it overwhelms myself. It, I just get completely overwhelmed. Instead of thinking, oh my gosh, I have so many things I have to do today, da 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 da. It's like, what, what absolutely has to go in my jar today? What might be able to go in my jar tomorrow? Um, but what has to get in today? So hopefully that kind of metaphor will, will help some folks. <laughs> it helps me. Um, okay, I got all my notes there. So the next slide. Um, so prioritizing is part one of this whole equation, right? So how can you make the best decisions about how and where to allocate your time, especially when you're faced with endless opportunities? So the cool thing about college is that there's always something going on. There's always something new to do. There's always something going on in the quad. There's club activities going on. You have things with your classes. It is never slow on the college campus. And even if it is slow for a small amount of time, that doesn't, that doesn't last. So um, I think for me, that's why I fell in love with college and the college experience because it, that's an amazing opportunity to have all that going on. Um, but it's also an amazing challenge because how do you balance all of these opportunities and all of these cool things with limited space in your jar, right? You can't, you just can't do everything unless you have the ability to like bend the space time continuum, right? I mean, there's just no way you can do everything, which is frustrating, but it's also reality. So how do you prioritize? Um, so this sometimes I think gets lost. Your main priority in college is academics, right? College is school. So you are there to, as a scholar, you're there to learn and to perform academically. So you need to go to class. <laughs> um, I think sometimes, you know, if you're new in college and they're not taking attendance, it's easy to sleep in or not go, and then you fall a little bit more behind, and then you can't catch up on the reading, and then going gets a little bit more scary, and then the midterm's coming up, and how did that happen? You haven't done the reading for three weeks. That's all time management, right? So you are already paying for the class, um, whether or not you go. So if you go and spend an hour in your class, it's someone's teaching you, it's study time, you're doing what you should be, prioritizing your academics, right? Do your homework, put time in your schedule to study, make an appointment with yourself. And everyone studies in different ways, right? Some people study best in the campus coffee shop. Some people want a quiet place in the library. Just make an appointment with yourself, put it in your time management system. But the first thing in your calendar needs to be academics. Um, if you don't do well in your classes, right, you don't get to stay. So that's important, right? You want to stay in school, hopefully. So you need to focus on academics. Um, that always takes a priority. But then there's lots of other stuff going on too, right? I mean, you can't study all the time. So how do you how do you prioritize your other things? So put your academics first, right? And then after that, I, I just would encourage students to ask themselves questions about what they want their college experience to be like. So College is amazing because you have a lot of freedom to figure out what you want to fall in love with and what your passions are and what social causes you want to work for and what experiences you want to have and where you want to go and what you want to do and who you want to meet and um, what kind of people you want to hang out with and learn from. So what do you want to do? What do you want to learn? Um, do you want to study abroad? Do you want to start a volunteer program? Do you want to join a volunteer program? Do you want to go to medical school? Um, and because of that, you want to be intentional about your application and what you need to do during your undergraduate year so you're an attractive med school candidate. Um, and also, what do you want your experience to be like, right? I mean, everybody can take Chemistry 101, but what happens when you leave the class? What do you, what do you want? Um, and so that all boils down to what do you want in your jar, right? Do you, some people just um, want a ton of co-curricular involvement. Um, <clears throat> other people don't want that, right? They just maybe want um, a chance to develop their poetry writing skills. So they want a smaller clique of people to, to help and be like a writing group, right? Everyone has different ideas. Um, so the question and the challenge then, then becomes, how do you make choices for yourself? Okay, I would like to have this experience. I would like to do this versus um, your poor time management skills making the choice for you. So 
I'm trying to talk slow. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> someone just said, how can I get more marbles? <laughs> exactly. How can I get a bigger jar? But that's the thing. You can't, right? You just can't. So it's frustrating. I mean, I wish I had a bigger jar too. But um, with poor time management, I think the contrast comes with good time management means you can say to yourself, okay, I really want to join a sorority. I really want that experience. How do I structure my academics, my academic requirements, and other parts of my college life so that I can make time to join a sorority? That's a pretty big time commitment. It's a really cool time commitment, but it's big, right? Versus poor time management means I'm not doing that well in my classes. I don't think I can join a sorority. I can't do it. It's too, I can't do it. But you can do it, right? You just have to figure out how to prioritize. Um, so I think obviously you wanna be in a situation where you're intentional about what, what you wanna do. So when you do graduate, graduate, you can say, wow, that, I love the sorority. It's been the best experience of my college years versus I really wish I would have made time to join a sorority. Um, it, it takes intention and it takes skills and it takes practice. It's not like one day you wake up and all of a sudden you have amazing time management skills and you're set for the rest of your life and you'll never be late, right? <laughs> like that doesn't happen. I don't think it hasn't happened to me, right? So I don't know anyone who has happened to. So um, it's an ongoing process. <laughs> and part of that process and part of prioritizing is learning how to say no. And I think that's a big challenge for college students because there's so much going on and your friends are involved in really cool things and have been working hard on programs and are giving really cool voice recitals and you want to go to all of it. But again, you know, your, um, your jar is limited. So it might mean, you know, I can't go, I can't join this club. I know I said I would go, but I can't. And that's okay. That's, that's much better than going and making a difficult situation worse. I think it can be awkward and uncomfortable, um, and it's a hard skill to learn, but it's really important, especially in college. Um, okay, so the next slide. How can you go about using your time efficiently, effectively, and productively? Sorry, this slide got a little wonky. Um, uh, hold on, let's go on here. Um, All right, so um, how can you use your time efficiently, effectively, and productively? Thanks, Michaela, for your comment. <laughs> and this does go for college and high school, right? And even me, I'm, I'm something many years out of college, right? And, and hopefully these skills can help you no matter where you are. I think we probably have college students, high school students, all kinds of folks. So how, regardless though, you still gotta go to class, prioritize your academics. So how do you use your time well? What does that mean? Um, I think one thing to remember is that a lot of people give college students advice, including me, right? That's my job. <laughs> so I feel almost silly saying this, but students get advice from everyone. Parents, friends, aunties, neighbors, right? Other, your parents' friends, I mean everybody. Um, but you are the expert on your college life or even your high school life, right? You're still learning, but you know yourself best, right? You know um, when you're not really doing something that you should be or when you're not really spending your time right or when you're kind of putting things off to the last minute, right? You know how long it takes you to write a paper and, and you know when you're waiting too long, I think. I think students aren't giving themselves enough credit. So an example I give myself is, okay, if you're efficient, um, ask you know, if you're spending time doing something, ask yourself just throughout the day and when you're studying, whatever the situation is. So, okay, am I being efficient? Say I'm hanging out in the quad and I have a big test in two days. <clears throat> so are you being efficient? I mean, it's fine to hang out in the quad, right? You need a break. You can't study all the time. But are you having a good time? Um, should you be studying? Is it okay to hang out? It can be. Right? It can be better than studying sometimes, but maybe you should be studying. Or are you hanging out in the quad and thinking about studying? Because then you're sort of doing neither at the same time. So are you being efficient with what you're doing? Like, are you enjoying yourself in the quad? Are you using your time wisely? Are there other things that you should be doing right now? So maybe you say, okay, I'll hang out in the quad for 30 minutes and then I'm gonna go study for my test. Because you do need a break, right? And you do wanna hang out with your friends. Um, so next you can ask yourself, okay, I'm in my room. 
we hung out for a little while, we need to study. Is this effective, right? Is this contributing in a positive way to my experience? Yeah, I hung out for a while, now I gotta pass my classes, right? So I gotta study. Um, <clears throat> okay, so you are being effective. You've changed what you need to do. Now that you're in your room studying, are you being productive? Is this a constructive, productive use of my time? Is studying constructive and productive? Of course, especially when you have a test in two days, right? Um, but if you head back to your room and maybe check some messages and look around on Instagram and get on Facebook and watch some silly vines, which only last six seconds, but after 10 minutes, you know, like that's a lot of time you've, you've lost. Um, maybe watch a YouTube video. So now you've been in your room for 45 minutes, but you haven't been studying. So you can be efficient, like, okay, you know, I'm doing different things I need to do. You can be effective. All right, I'm heading to my room, going to study. When you get there, are you doing what you should be doing? Are you being productive? Also, if you're on the quad and you're thinking about studying when you want to let yourself relax, and then you go back to your room and you're studying, but you're not really doing studying. Your book's open, but you're not really studying. Or you're thinking back to the quad. That's not necessarily productive use of your time because you're sort of sabotaging the break you're supposed to be giving yourself by worrying about studying and you're sabotaging your studying by taking breaks or thinking about your break. So your brain, it helps to try to focus, right? Let's be productive. And you can't just study all the time. You can't hang out all the time. And one tool I use um, is to reward myself. I, I can't write 24 hours a day, right? That would just, I would not write anything good by after an hour or two. So I take breaks like, okay, you know, at 1030, I can just surf the internet for 15 minutes, whatever I want to look at, right? Get the celebrity gossip. Great. Back to work. Um, so you can, you know, that helps me then be more productive too when I'm writing later or working on a project. <clears throat> so throughout the day, throughout your high school years, throughout your college years, it's just helpful to get in the habit to ask yourself, is this the marble that deserves a place in my jar? Is 45 minutes of taking a break and not really doing much helpful? Is that, do I want that in my jar? Do I have space in my jar? Because it could be you do, right? Maybe you don't have that much to do. Or it could be you don't, right? You have a big test coming up and it's really hard and you need to study. So take that, just don't put that marble in, take it out, put the more important things in there. Um, oh, I'm chatty. Sorry guys, I'm trying to go faster. So the third part of this, kind of my advice, and I think of good time management, is to have a system. So it doesn't matter what kind of system you have. You can have um, anything that works for you, right? You can have a paper calendar, Google calendar, something on your phone. I actually use an app and a website program called Remember the Milk. It's not good for scheduling per se, it doesn't have a calendar, but it's really good for task management, like okay, by Thursday, I have to get an article into U.S. News and World Report. So it, it you, and you can use hashtag. It's really cool. Um, that helps me, right? It's a system I use. Um, you have to have something. I don't think I've ever met a student who's made it through college without time management systems. I've met students who did not have time management systems and did not do very well. <laughs> um, but I really think you just need something. So systems include kind of those detail systems, right? A calendaring system. It also includes a general idea of courses for next semester or next year. And even if you're an undeclared major, I think this still applies. So that can mean you know that your favorite professor in the English department is teaching a Shakespeare class next semester. So what do you need to take this semester so you can register for that class? Is there a prereq? Um, or <clears throat> kind of looking at short and long-term goals too. Um, do you want to study abroad? And if so, what classes do you need to take now so that you can study abroad when you want to? Like, do you have to have two years of a language, for example? Um, or if you're a science major, maybe you need all classes that have no labs in the same semester so you can go to Spain. It's really hard to study abroad if you're a science major. So you need to sort of manage your long-term plan, right? So that you can have the experiences that you want. If your long-term goal is to be able to study abroad, that takes work, that takes time management. Um, <clears throat> And also, too, you can't do everything at once. I mean, if you want to join a sorority, be president of the Black Student Alliance, 
go to med school um, and have, you know, one or two kind of sport, like university sport experiences um, or join the drama department. That's amazing, but you may not be able to do all of those things in the same semester, right? So, like, that's a lot of co-curricular involvement, which is great. It complements your academics, right? But you might need to think, okay, I can't join a sorority this semester, or I'll try to take a leadership position in a club my junior year, but right now I'm just going to enjoy being a kind of average member of that club. Um, so your systems help you decide what marbles get to go in your jar. So this semester may be a smaller marble for your club membership goes in the jar and in two years a bigger marble goes in if you're in a leadership role. Maybe you can't manage the time and you can't join a sorority your first year in college. That's fine, right? People join their senior year. Um, so then fill your jar with other things so that next year your jar will have space for what you want to do. <clears throat> okay, so the smaller details um, so having a strong time management system supports all kinds of things. I was kind of saying this at the beginning. It's not just getting your paper in on time, which is important, but there's other parts of a college life or even if you're in high school of applying to, to college, right? So success with finances, your courses, and all aspects of your college experience. So good time management means you get your FAFSA in on time. It means you can apply early for scholarships. You know when exams are coming. Um, maybe you know you need to refill a prescription medication on time. Um, having systems and the ability to track all of that is really important. Because um, if you submit your financial aid paperwork late and your school applies it based on first come, first serve, that can be a really costly time management mistake. Um, and you don't want to sabotage your own success just because it's you made a time management error, right? Um, additionally, time management systems and having good, strat good time management skills gives you flexibility. Like, maybe you didn't know it was someone on your soccer team's birthday, um, but everyone's going out tonight. And so, of course, you want to go, and you probably feel pressured to go. Um, and if you have a good time management system, you can kind of think, like, okay, yeah, I have an exam in a couple days, but I am prepared with my studying. I only have four more hours of studying. I think I think I can go. Or it gives you the comfort, the kind of confidence and the comfort to say, you know what, I really want to go, but I just can't. I have this exam tomorrow morning, and I still need to study for it. I, I can't. You know, academics are my priority. Um, and maybe we can celebrate after my test or this weekend, but sometimes you have to say no, too. Um, and then the avoidance of all-nighters. I always find it endearing when students, or anybody really, says, oh my gosh, I can't do something that night. I'm going to be up all night. I'm going to pull an all-nighter that night. But if you can plan in advance to pull an all-nighter, that's time management, right? It's really bad <laughs> time management, but you're managing your time. So if you know in advance that you are going to be up all night cramming for a test, you have time management skills. You're just not using them in the best way possible. So... <laughs> If you could plan in advance to cram, you can plan in advance not to cram. Um, so you've sort of, as I said here, you, when that happens, you've kind of scheduled poor planning and procrastination into your calendar. Like life happens sometimes. Maybe the two days you thought you could spend studying, you got the stomach flu, so you have to stay up late the night before the exam to study. But <clears throat> you should not be planning to procrastinate. Good time management helps eliminate that. And yeah, college involves late nights, but that kind of cramming, massive focus a ton of time on one thing at the last minute is not is not a good pattern. Um, okay, so just kind of to sum things up, I hope I didn't talk too fast. Um, you're a student, right? You're either in college or you want to go to college. Um, that means you're pretty smart. You may question that sometimes. I think that's normal, but um, you should respect yourself, right? You're, you're a scholar. Um, and you're trying to use your brain to better your life or the people around you. So that deserves respect. That's hard work. That's a big decision. Um, and that kind of life goal is important. And because of that, your time is important. And I really hope that you will respect yourself and your hard work by treating your time as sacred. Right? It's, it's worth What you're doing is very worthy. Um, so use your time to um, put value into your goals. 
So make wise decisions about how and where you use your time. Prioritize your academics. Um, choose the rest based on your preferences. See what can go into your jar, what doesn't get to go into your jar. It's okay to say no. It's not mean. Sometimes it's nicer to say no than to flake later on an obligation you made. Um, use your time efficiently, effectively, and productively. Just get into the habit of asking yourself, is this what I should be doing? Do I need to be doing other things? Am I being productive with what I'm supposed to be doing? Um, and then again, have a larger system in place. I can't stress this enough. Um, have and use a calendar system. So um, you can turn time management into one of your strengths instead of something you struggle with during your time in school. Um, so that's that. And I believe that this presentation will be available online later. I think it can be good to have a refresher, especially if you're like me and you need a visual list. I won't remember things just from hearing them. Um, so I need to refer back to it later. So time for questions. Okay, so I'm just going to start at the top. Um, and if you have questions, feel free to type them in. So first question, how can I get more marbles? <laughs> me too. If you find that out, let me know. If you find out where to buy a bigger jar, I would like that. Um, does prioritizing your academics mean you cannot have a social life? No. Um, I think what sometimes can happen is that you don't prioritize your academics, which means you don't have much of a social life because you're always playing catch up. Like the example I gave before, like, oh, my friends are going out for a birthday, but I have this huge test tomorrow. I haven't studied for it. That sabotages the social life. So if you can allocate, okay, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, spend this much time in class. My brain has this much energy left to study. I will allocate two to three hours every night. Um, but that's only two to three hours every night, right? You have other time. So prioritizing your academics means you put your academics first, but not at the exclusion of everything else. Um, I think if all you do is academics, that's not good for your brain. It's like me, I can't, I can't write all day. I mean, I guess I could, but it just wouldn't be very good, right? And I would end up hating it. And part of college is, is having an amazing out of the classroom experience too. So prioritizing your academics, I think, means you will have more time for a social life than not. Um, okay. Oh, thank you. This is helping me with my high school years. Um, you're welcome, Michaela. Good luck. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see. Whoops. Okay, how can you manage your time if you're being distracted by your roommate? Boy, did I have this problem myself. Um, let's see getting a lot of answers in my head right now. I think there's a bunch of things you could do. There's sort of easier things like studying somewhere else. Um, I, I'm not good at studying when other people are around. I'm not good at writing when other people are around, which makes me sort of crabby, I think. But that's, that's how my brain works, right? I wish I could write with music and people hanging out, but I just can't. Um, so I think it's sort of learning, okay, if I, after dinner, I head back to my room and try to study, it doesn't go well. I get frustrated. I get distracted by my roommate. There's fun people in the hall. Then I can smell popcorn popping. And you can't smell popcorn without wanting some, right? So then you have to get up. So I think it means making choices. Um, like maybe after dinner, instead of going back to your room, you can head to the library for an hour or two, head to the coffee shop, do a, do a study group. They're, you're not the only student on campus who needs quiet, right? <laughs> so find some other students and agree, okay, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday night, we meet wherever it is and just kind of have a quiet study session so you don't feel totally alone and you can still have some goof off time, but not to the point of distraction. Um, I think too, you can talk to your roommate. It can be scary to talk to your roommate, but if you can't talk to your roommate about little stuff, um, it can really quickly turn into big stuff. Um, and just talk to your roommate too and say, look, I'm really distracted when we have people over. Can we not have people over after 10? Or can you hang out with them in the quad? Or can we have people over only on Mondays and Tuesdays or whatever? Because it is your college experience, it is your job to graduate. So if you are finding yourself being distracted, there's some stuff you can do to change your situation. There's also stuff you might need to ask somebody else to do to change your situation. And that doesn't mean you're being mean. That just means that's what your brain needs. And it could be your roommates being really distracting. They're really chatty, right? Like <laughs> maybe your roommate's the chattiest person you've ever met, which can be fun, but also challenging. Um, so there's, I think you could talk to your roommate. You can also talk to an RA 
or if your roommate's sort of distracting in a negative way, um, you can always change roommates. I mean, I know that's less than ideal, but it is an option. I think it's a rare situation where you're really stuck in a bad situation in college. There are a lot of different avenues to support you, whether it's a bad roommate or a bad class. Um, you know, talk to an RA, talk to a tutor, talk to a professor, see what you can do to sort of add some different factors into the decision. I hope that answered your question, Brenda. Okay, Michaela. Is it sometimes better to not have a social life when your dreams are meant uh, to graduate high school, get your master's, and get your PhD? Um, no. <laughs> you still need a social life. Um, for your own mental health, I think, for your own development in college. Um, and also, I think, as a candidate, if you want to be a PhD someday, um, programs, just like college, colleges like to see well-rounded people, uh, graduate programs like to see well-rounded people too. Um, I, I don't know for sure, but I am certainly fairly confident that I got into Harvard for a graduate program because I was so involved in my college. Um, and I did not have straight A's. <laughs> I was closer to straight B's than straight A's, but I was interested in what colleges do. And because of that, I immersed myself in my college environment. And I think that demonstrated a level of interest and curiosity that is appealing to a graduate program. Um, so if you do want to get a PhD in, I don't know, biology, right, education, whatever it is, that if you're going for PhD level or graduate school, that should be a passion of yours. And you can have that be an academic passion, like you love to learn and spend time in the botany lab. Um, but it, it should be a passion in other parts of your life too. So maybe you tutor students, maybe you hang out with really great people you met in a women in science club. Um, I think having a social life is important, not just for your college life, but just in general, right? It's, Time management, and I think the college experience is about balance. So how do you balance things in a way that makes you feel okay? You're not always trying to catch up. Your life is not run by your academics. It's not run by your social life. <laughs> You're not stressed out all the time. Um, you, you are living an active, engaged, enjoyable life. And academics is the biggest factor of that, but it shouldn't be the only factor. Um, and I think students get so caught up sometimes on um, the social parts of college. Excuse me, the hiccups. <laughs> um, they can they can forget about academics, or they get so caught up on academics they can forget about the the co curricular scene. And both of those should complement each other, right? I mean, ideally, there's no tension between the two. Um, your academics supports what you're doing outside of the classroom, and your co curricular outside of the classroom experience complements your academics also. Um, Okay, that's all of the questions. Do you guys have any more? It's like you can ask me for free. <laughs> Not like I normally charge, but um, I'm here if you have. It's a good time to ask someone anything. I'll wait another minute or two. Um, if you do, do need more help with time management, obviously this uh, video will be posted later, I believe. Um, you, I also have a lot of information on time management on my um, about.com site, and that's just collegelife.about.com. Um, and that, those time management articles are extremely popular. So to me, that means students are struggling with it. Um, so don't feel alone, right? It's like the way the what to do if you fail a class article is really popular at the end of the semester. <laughs> Obviously, time management didn't work very well for a lot of folks, so it's better to be proactive, right? Read some things on time management. I have lists of systems. You can do other time management things. You can even talk to, you know, mentors, tutors, professors, advisors, your RA at school about what works, you know, given your own campus culture. So what is my email, someone asked. Um, so it's it's on the front page of this, actually. Here, let me bring it back. Um, So it's kelsey at kelseylynn.com, but Kelsey spelled kind of funny from my parents. Um, so feel free to email me. I would mention College Week Live in the email, in the subject line. 
um, just so I kind of know uh, what you're emailing me about. But anyone else? Hmm? All right. Well, good luck, guys. I sort of feel like this is a self-selecting group here, right? If I'm looking at the number, there's a good number of folks here. So if you're here managing your time well, looking into it, you'll be okay, right? It's the students who don't, don't have time to go to a presentation on time management. <laughs> It's probably not so good. So, you guys are great. Um, feel free to email me if you have questions. Oh, one last question. Hold on. Oh, if you live at school, do you manage your time better? Hmm. I don't think. I don't think so. I think it will give you. I think that's a math equation. Um, if you live at school, you may most often, I would think, um, spend less time commuting. But that doesn't mean you manage your time better. Because you could say, well, I live off campus, so I'll just study when I get home. So when I'm on campus, I can goof around all day. That's not true. Right? <laughs> um, and it depends. I mean, maybe you drive. You go to school in LA, and you drive an hour every day to go to class, and you have to drive because the bus system's really bad. <laughs> um, but maybe you live in Boston, and you can take the T to class and you can study for an hour on the way. Um, it's, it's not necessarily where you live or what the structure of your life is. I worked a lot when I was in college. That was just my financial reality. Um, so it's what you do with your time, right? Like I got jobs that kept me physically active so I could kind of work in exercise. Or during really stressful semesters, I got jobs where I could work in downtime, um, like do homework. So it, it's, it's not necessarily a, a structure, like you live here, you live on campus, you live off campus, you live in your sorority house, you live in a quiet apartment by yourself. Um, it's what you do in those structures. It's what you do in your systems, right? Like if you work a lot, that doesn't necessarily mean you're not gonna do well, it just means you need to make sure how you're spending your time is, is efficient and effective and productive, right? Um, Okay, I think that was the last one, so I will let you guys go. Um, thank you for coming. Again, email me if you have questions. Um, nice to kind of see all you guys on the question box. Um, and good luck. You'll do great. Thanks. Bye.